Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'd like today to talk to you about uh, Trio and how it maybe can save your soul when you are working with asynchronous programming. Uh, as you may know, asynchronous programming is really not a new thing in Python. It's been there basically forever, like uh, thanks to Twisted. But since uh, some years, it has been uh, something really bigger with uh, this new AsyncIO library and especially the introduction of uh, this async await keyword. Uh, the thing is, uh, how, how bad was it just before this async await keyword was, was a thing? Uh, so let's see something. So just in the beginning, it was like that. Uh, this is something that you no longer write in Python, so I had to find another language that still uses it sometime. Um, so it's really horrible because you have to handle error by yourself. You cannot use an exception. Um, if you use a debugger on this, uh, basically you're on your own. You never know uh, a callback, how it has been created, by who or something. Uh, so after some time, people come up with a better idea. Uh, so it's called uh, Promise on JavaScript. It's called uh, Differ on Twisted or Future on, uh, on Async.io, but it's always the same idea. So now it's a bit better because uh, you can, uh, you know, combine Promise together to do a synchronization between callbacks. Um, it's kind of callbacks on steroids, but uh, you still you cannot use the exception right, and uh, you know um, your debugger is uh, still totally useless because uh, it's still callbacks. So after some time, you got the real revolution, which is uh, async await keyword. So now we have this concept of uh, asynchronous function, right? So it's much better because uh, now you have uh, the regular function and you have no, just a new kind of color of uh, functions, the actual synchronous one. And uh, you can just use this await keyword and uh, you stop the execution of this uh, function for some time and you give a chance for another coroutine to just uh, write a bit. Uh, so yeah, it's much better. I think we can just improve it a bit more like this. And uh, yeah, it will be perfect, right? We're using uh, this new asyncio library. We're using the async await keyword. Everything's fine. So this is the end, right? But yeah, maybe not. Uh, I mean, if you've been to uh, the talk of Yuri uh, this morning, you know that there is still kind of some trouble with asyncio. For instance, uh, let's see this code. It's uh, really simple. Like uh, you see, there is this scheduler function which acts as a, a little server, so it's a long running, and from time to time it will schedule a new coroutine which does some job. Uh, the thing is, this job is broken. It will raise an exception. Uh, so if we run this, let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, I got the code right there. You can really, you can see, yeah, big enough. Uh, so yeah, if you're used to asynchronous programming, maybe you, you don't feel it's that weird. But if you're not, it seems really wrong there because there is an exception occurring here. It's really obvious, but. And we never try to, to catch the exception, right? In your code base, there is no accept uh, anything. But anyway, the, the code was still running. I mean, we got an exception. We just uh, print it on the, the standard output. And we go on like, uh, OK, nothing occurs. Uh, so yeah, it feels wrong. And the other thing is, if we look at the stack trace, it's not the stack trace is not complete. If we see this function raise the exception, then it was this function, which called the other one. And we cannot go up. So it's like uh, here, we created these new coroutines. And in AsyncIO, when you create a coroutine, you go like uh, it's fire and forget. You just create the new coroutine. And then there is no connection between the, the creator and the creation. And uh, so it's really bad, because it means when a one coroutine raises an exception, it bubbles up, 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 until it goes to the, um, the, um, the event loop. And then the event loop doesn't know what to do with this exception. It cannot give it to anyone. So it just uh, does the least worst thing it can do, which would be printing it on the standard output and uh, just go finger crossed and say, OK, maybe this thing was not too important and maybe we will be able to, to go on. Um, let's see another example. So here it's a bit more complicated. I call it the recursive Russian roulette. So it's basically we are playing Russian roulette, but with, uh, with program. So this morning we were killing threads. Now we are just killing coroutines. So it's OK. Uh, the idea is um, we have this function. We, let's say, try our luck. And if we get lucky, uh, the coroutine doesn't blow off. And what it does, it just uh, creates two new coroutines that will just continue this same function. Uh, and now we use this asyncio gather. Uh, so if you don't know what asyncio gather does, it basically just uh, wait for the coroutine to finish. Uh, so if we run this code, what will happen? Uh, I got it. 
here. I think something wrong. So if I, if I just try it a bit uh, to stop a bit faster, yeah. So we can see just we try our luck one time, then uh, we create new coroutines that we'll try. Eventually, we run out of luck here. And uh, here there is the exception, which is uh, handled. We can see it's uh, here. And uh, here it's getting crazy, because uh, even if we are out of uh, our recursive regression roulette function, there is anyway new coroutine which, which are created and which execute some code and create new coroutine, and it's getting crazy. So what's happening there? Um, if we think about the coroutine, we have just uh, our main coroutine first, and then this coroutine will call the recursive regression roulette function. So let's say it gets lucky, and uh, it just has to create two new coroutines that uh, themselves get lucky, and so create two new coroutines. So we're like this. Uh, if we consider the, this async IO gather function, it's something like that. So you have the main coroutine, which is um, listening on coroutine 1 and coroutine 2, and we have coroutine 1 waiting on its children and coroutine 2 waiting on its children. So now, let's say this uh, coroutine uh, blows off. Uh, what's happening, and I thought it was what's happening until I saw uh, Yuri's talk, and now I'm not sure of anything, which means async IO is really hard. Even when you want to do a talk, slightly uh, about this. Uh, so I saw that when uh, a coroutine uh, blow up and the coroutine uh, is uh, watched by async IO gather, async IO gather will cancel the other coroutine it is tasked to watch and it will make the exception bubbles up. So it bubbles up to the uh, coroutine two and uh, this coroutine two is also watched by uh, async IO gather by the coroutine one, uh, by the, sorry, the coroutine main. So we cancel coroutine one, two and uh, we end up like this. So now it seems a bit wrong because, in fact, the async IO gather from uh, coroutine one couldn't kick in. So it was just killed. It couldn't destroy the sub coroutine it was tasked to watch. And now we end up like this. And given we just uh, catch the exception in the main and just sitting around for some time, then the coroutine, the existing coroutine, can just spawn new coroutines and go crazy. So. What's the problem here? Uh, I see three things that could be improved. Uh, the first thing is it would be much better to have complex stack trace. If we take one coroutine, we should be able to read all the, the part of the coroutine and to be able to go up, up, up until we see, okay, this coroutine has been creating there. And if we go up enough, we should go to see the, the main of the, of the function, of the, of the root of our program, sorry. Uh, the other thing, which is a bit related to this, if, if we get an exception from uh, our coroutine, it should bubbles up and never get uh, silenced by something like, uh, okay, we just print in an STD out and we'll be uh, enough. It should, if nobody uh, catch the exception, it should go up until it blow off our program. I mean, that's how it works on the synchronous program, right? So it should be the same on asynchronous. And finally, something a bit slightly more abstract is um, we should be able to uh, have our coroutine, which, uh, which should have an easy way to connect our coroutine together in order to express the lifetime of uh, one coroutine um, according to another one. For example, we say, okay, we have a parent, we have a child. If the parent dies, we want the child to die too. Uh, so, yeah, it's time to talk to you about trial. And uh, you know this guy? Uh, I mean, um, his name is uh, Nathaniel Smith. And um, he had this idea, this great idea. He said, okay, uh, there is new feature in Python, like the async await. And so what if we just uh, drop all the, the other uh, deprecated way of doing asynchronous function, like uh, uh, promise and callback, and we just focus on this async await thing? And what if we go a bit further? What if we invent new way, new abstraction, new building blocks to do uh, asynchronous function, asynchronous programming? And uh, let's see how far we can go with this. And so we end up with trial like this. Uh, so what's about trial? There is three main concepts about trial. Uh, the first thing is uh, the async away keyword. Uh, we already talked about it. We already know why they are so great. Uh, the two more exotic things are the nursery and the cancel scope. So first, the nursery. Um, here is a slightly modified um, version of the recursive Russian roulette. This way, it's, it was written for trial. And basically, the only thing that's changed is um, the, the red rectangle. Uh, the idea in trio is if you want to spawn new coroutine, you cannot do it uh, fire and forget style like you would do with uh, async IO. You must use uh, a nursery object. So putting it another way, you have to say that um, every coroutine in your program will be connected to a nursery. 
And uh, the good thing about nursery is they are asynchronous context manager. So you use them with async quiz. When you do async quiz on nursery, you start, uh, when you enter, it does nothing. But when you want to leave this block, it will uh, be blocking. It will block until all the coroutines that are uh, connected to this nursery will end. Um, so how does it solve our problem? Uh, let's see um, the coroutine we have before. Uh, now we said they are bundled uh, inside the nursery, right? So it looks a bit something like that. Uh, in fact, there is a tool in, uh, in trial which is called the monitor. And uh, this tool allows you to plug inside a trio application to just watch in real time the, the coroutines. And so if you use this on uh, our program, you will see something like that. So the idea is um, now what we have is a tree of coroutine. It's really a graph. And so it's much simpler, I think, to visualize how trial works when you see this. Uh, if we take our example back with the exception from here, uh, I think it's really simple to see that every time the, your exception bubbles up into uh, one coroutine up, it's really easy for trio to know which coroutine it should close. So it goes like this. And so it, it just works. It's really simple to see that you have a tree. Everything that under the tree uh, and under the node that you are working on should be destroyed because this node is going to, to be destroyed too. Uh, so you end up like this, you end up clean. Uh, something else about uh, trial is the cancel scope. So the idea is if we are doing uh, an asynchronous, uh, if we are using an asynchronous framework, it means that we are doing uh, I.O., right? The, the trouble with I.O. is uh, it's basically uh, you are waiting from, some, from someone else and this someone else can crash. Uh, you can have the router on the other end of the internet which uh, die or something like that. So you always have to deal with, uh, with timeouts. So it would be it would be really great if we could really easily say, okay, I want to have this part of the program which has this kind of timeout, and to put it really easily. But as we saw, we already have this uh, this tree of coroutine, this graph. So it's really easy with trial to just say, okay, I want this part of the graph to run, say, in uh, 0 0.3 seconds, for example. Uh, so you, to do that, you just use a context manager. So you, you put a context manager with uh, this console scope, and you say, okay, uh, this block of code, I want it to run for at most uh, this time. And if it goes more than that, then we will just leave this block. And every node that has been created, remember, we are, we are like this. So everything that has been created under our coroutine, you can destroy it. So you have the guarantee yet that no matter what, uh, if the, uh, the um, timeout occurs, uh, you you won't leak any coroutine. Everything will be clean. Uh, oh, sorry, I go too far. So yeah, one good thing about uh, our recursive version right, right now is we got uh, this timeout. So now maybe the game is a bit more fair. We won't kill any coroutine. So I just uh, written a, a trial version of. Uh, this frequency version red, and yeah, we run out of luck this way. Uh, yeah, we're really unlucky. Yeah, this time we didn't kill anybody, so that's nice. Uh, maybe you're not bought yet to this concept, but uh, maybe you just have to think how you would have done to implement this timeout feature if you would have to do this with just async IO with the previous example. Um, okay, so that's it. And that's one of the features of Treo, actually. It's there is really, really few concepts. It's like an extremely simple asynchronous library. And that's something which is, I think, really, um, really strange from an asynchronous library because, you know, you, you know, twisted, you know, async IO, they are all uh, with a, a lot of documentation, a lot of concept, a lot of things. And so it seems really complicated. And with trial, you just read something, and in half a day, uh, you're ready to, to work. And you have those really small and simple building blocks, but you can put them together to create really complex things the easy way. I mean, it's easy to get things right. So I think it's a really great feature. Uh, OK, so maybe you're wondering, it looks great on the paper, but what about real life? So there is this use case. Let's say you want to, to connect to Debian.org. Uh, the thing is, uh, so you have this domain name, you want to resolve it, and uh, you know, internet is a, a big uh, big thing with a lot of complexity, so it's never simple. So when you resolve um, your domain name, you will end up with multiple IP address. And so now you have a new trouble, which is which IP address should I connect to? So the first idea you could have is, well, just try to connect to the first one, and after some time, if, if it fails, we'll try the next one, and so on and so forth. 
The trouble is, yeah, this is really slow. So there is maybe a better way. So the other way to do it is just to go uh, a bit more violently. So we just try everything in, uh, in concurrency and uh, we take whichever is the fastest. But it takes a lot more resources, right? So there may be a middle ground. And uh, so an attempt of this middle ground is uh, this thing called happy eyeball. So the idea is you start by connecting to uh, the first uh, IP address you have. And if after some time you didn't, uh, I mean, you're still waiting for this connection to, to succeed, then you try another address. And if this other address just uh, fails faster than the timeout, then you try the next one. And uh, eventually one of them will succeed, and then you, you can cancel all the other coroutines because you, you have a new a co a connection which is correct now. Uh, so how complica complicated is it to implement? <laughs> Uh, there is no implementation of this in uh, AsyncIO, but there is one in Twisted. Uh, so this is the code. I, I didn't read it myself, but uh, according to Nathaniel, it's a uh, quite complicated code. Uh, there is a lot of uh, nested function inside them, so it's hard to read, it's hard to understand, it to, it's hard to manage. Uh, so the Twisted guy, they are aware of this, and so they come up with a, a new version of this, uh, which is much better, which is much simpler. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, they said it's, it's less crazy, it's, it's easier to work with, but they are still not happy about it. But the thing important here is uh, the people working on this are like top guy. I mean, the guy who written this, uh, this implementation, the second one, is the creator of Twisted Insults. So it's basically the guy which has the more experience in asynchronous programming of the whole Python community. So the problem is not the people, the problem is the language. The language, I mean, we don't speak the right word. Uh, it was really easy talking human language to say, okay, that's how uh, Happy Eyeball works. But when you want to write it in Python, it gets really hard. And this is not what Python is about. Python is about being able to write a complex thing easily. So maybe it would be better in trial. Who knows? Uh, this is a, a skeleton of our function, so we call it uh, open TCP socket. It takes uh, our host name and uh, the maximum time we want to wait between two, two attempts of connection. So the first thing is uh, really simple. We just uh, do the DNS resolution and then we got uh, multiple targets we could try to connect to. Uh, here we use uh, this trial socket uh, module, which is uh, just the same thing than the regular socket uh, module. The standard one, it's just an asynchronous uh, version of it. Uh, after that, we define this winning socket. So this will be the variable which eventually will get uh, which socket won, which socket is ready to be used. And if we have no one, well, we just raise an exception, right? Uh, now, what, would, what, would, what do we want to do? Uh, we want to do multiple things at a time. We want to start a connection and then another one and this kind of thing. So to do this in trials, there is not two ways, there are only one way, which is uh, we just have to create a nursery. So yeah, that's what we do. We create a nursery, we just uh, use it as an asynchronous context manager, and uh, we create this uh, attend function. So every time we try a new attempt against a new IP address, we will call this attempt function. And so we, we start by calling it uh, for the first attempt. Um, so yeah, what are we going to write inside this attempt? Uh, what we can see here is, uh, except for the first attempt, we are always waiting. The first thing we do is we're just waiting. And we're waiting for two things, in fact. The first thing is uh, if the previous attempt is taking more than the timeout time. And the, the second thing we are waiting for is if the previous attempt just failed fast. So to do this in trial, what we can do is we can create uh, multiple events. Each attempt will have a failed event, so every time it fails, it will set up this uh, event. So now we can wait on this event, and we use uh, cancel scope to say, okay, I want to wait on this event, but I, want, I don't want to wait on this event no longer than this time. So if we reach the timeout, we'll just leave this uh, context manager and continue a code. Uh, so now you know, we are almost done to do the actual job, but just before that, we have to spawn the next attempt, because before doing our own attempt, we have to spawn the next one because it will watch to see if we are taking too long. So to do that, we just uh, use the nursery. So we just uh, take the nursery and uh, create, ask the nursery to create a new coroutine and to execute uh, this next attempt on the, the next IP address. And now we're all set. 
we can just uh, do our socket connection, our socket trial connection. So again, it's just like uh, the the regular um, the regular um, socket module library. Uh, so now there is only two possible outcomes, which are first um, the um, the connection failed. So what we do is just we we update this event uh, about uh, okay we we couldn't do anything. So now it's up to the next atom to to, to try to succeed. And uh, the other outcome is, well, we got a winning socket. So we just have to update this. And now uh, we can cancel the, nurs the nursery. So the idea about canceling the nursery is like, we cancel all the coroutines which are connecting to this nursery. And given we have canceled all those coroutines, it means the nursery is now free. And so these blocks we had there with this asynchronous context manager, we will just leave it automatically and continue the code. So yeah, now we're done. Uh, maybe you're not sure if it works. So I have the code here. I think it's this one. Yeah. So it's just the same I show you. Uh, just I added uh, this main function to just say, okay, we'll try some Debian.org. Uh, obviously, it would be uh, much more impressive if I have done uh, live coding, but uh, no, it's not my kind of style. So let's just pretend. It works. Anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing applause too because it's not my code, it's Nathaniel ones. Uh, I stole most of my talk uh, from his own, so yeah. Uh, anyway, so what does Trio offers you? Uh, yeah, there is basically everything that uh, you can expect from an asynchronous library, like uh, you know all the standard stuff. You can use uh, asynchronous uh, file system access, you can use networking. Uh, there is all those synchronous uh, tools, like uh, we use event, you, you have queue, you have logs, etc. There is a really good testing helper. If you love a PyTest, there is a great PyTest module. If you love a hypothesis, there is a great hypothesis module. If you don't love hypothesis, you should try hypothesis, and then you will love it. Uh, there is this control C working. I mean, it's it feels like, yeah, what is this? I use control C, it works. But no, uh, control C is really hard to get it right. And nobody knows about it until you have read uh, this article uh, that Nathaniel wrote on his blog. You, you should definitely go to his blog. Everything is really interesting. So yeah, this is working. Uh, and finally, there is uh, one of my favorite features is this compatible layer. Uh, you know, uh, AsyncIO is really great because it has it. It makes uh, all the, the entire asynchronous world in Python compatible with each other. So with AsyncIO, you have compatibility with uh, Twisted, you have compatibility with Tornado, everything is compatible. So now, uh, with Trio, you just have to write uh, an AsyncIO loop, but you write it inside in Trio, and now you get compatibility with the entire rest of the uh, ecosystem, of the asynchronous ecosystem, just this way. Uh, so it's really great because it means that your own code base, the code you, you just want to, tr to type fast and want to, to do the thing, uh, you can use it in trial, so you will get safety. But for the third party library, the thing that like, say you want to connect to Postgre, you want to use async PG because it's really great. Uh, but this code is already well tested, so you know there won't be any trouble. And you can really easily plug this uh, asynchronous library with your code which is written in trial. So yeah, it's really great. And uh, yeah, I'm not the only one who thinks uh, this code is really great. Uh, there is uh, plenty of famous people, like uh, even rock stars. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I guess uh, this is uh, about right. Uh, one more thing, I just, uh, I just stolen uh, maybe half of my uh, conference. It's from a national conference from last PyCon. And uh, the link, which is here, is, uh, is home. So you, you should definitely check this out because uh, there is a lot of things, if you're interested in this topic, uh, it's like, uh, okay, you should watch this conference, you should read this blog post and this one and this one. So uh, if you want to become better at this and you don't know already uh, this guy, uh, Nathaniel, uh, you should definitely go to this link. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much, Amanda, for this great talk. Uh, if anyone has any question, just line up at the mic right on there on the side. Hi, that was excellent. <laughs> Uh, could you say a little bit more about hypertest and indeed whether unit test is also available with this thing? Or uh, yeah. So what do you want to know about hypertest? You already know this thing or no? no? 
<laughs> okay, so it's basically uh, the greatest thing if you want to test code. Uh, the, if you want to test code, anything, uh, anything. anything. Uh, the idea is uh, in normally what you do is uh, you create use cases. So you just say, okay, I want to test this function. I will uh, put this uh, input, and I I want to get this output. But the thing is, most of the time when you do this, you forget things. For instance, let's say you want to have a function that works on the on the strings. Uh, you will try simple case, like you use it ASCII strings. But you will forget that there is like uh, Unicode strings. And there is Unicode string with uh, Unicode cut points which are not printable, this kind of thing. So it gets really, really tricky, really complicated. And so with uh, hypothesis, what you can say what is... Hypothesis? Yeah. Oh, no. Sorry, it's my accent, which is... Right. Sorry, I'm French. Sorry. <laughs> I know hypothesis. Yeah. So now you can... Just uh, turn around and say to people how great hypothesis is and pronounce it right. <laughs> hypothesis, yeah, I don't like it, but, it, but it's really good. Shame! <laughs> Property-based testing. Yeah, that's it. So anyone who wants to talk about trio and not hypothesis and French accent? Yeah, you have to come here. Yeah. So, have you have you encountered any bugs with the Trio Async IO compatibility layer? Does it? Uh, no, I didn't encounter any bugs yet. There is little kind of, let's say, quirks sometimes, because, yeah, obviously you're using one asynchronous library with another one, so obviously you have to be careful. But, uh, yeah, if you're careful enough, it's really straightforward. And, uh, yeah, by the way, try your code base is uh, crazy good. I mean, when you read the code base, uh, there is uh, like two times more comments than the code. And every time it's like uh, the guy is, uh, is writing all the, um, the state of the art about just this line of code. This kind of thing we are doing is this, 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 this. And if you want to know more about this, you should go there, 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 there. So just, if you don't want to use trial, at least read the code. <laughs> So it seems with the uh, compatibility of a lot of the network libraries with AsyncIO, they all implement their own AsyncIO event loop. So it means you can interact with uh, Trio and AsyncIO, but not necessarily with Trio and all of the other async uh, libraries. Is there a way to stop the madness and everyone use the AsyncIO event loop instead? Uh, no, it's, you should see it a bit like uh, you, you're writing some code in uh, AsyncIO, and uh, say, uh, you say, okay, I, I want to go faster. So now I will, don't use the AsyncIO uh, normal implementation. Now I will use UV loop. So it's still AsyncIO, but it's just uh, another implementation of AsyncIO, right? So now it's just the same thing with trial. With trial, you get an, an implementation of AsyncIO, which is made with trial. So you can run totally just AsyncIO code with this, but it wouldn't be really interesting. And so the good thing is you can have a part of your code which is in trial and the rest which is in AsyncIO, and you use this implementation of the AsyncIO event loop to make the both uh, be able to talk to each other. Yeah, but that's great for Trio and AsyncIO, but when you want to use Trio, AsyncIO, Twisted and Tornado, and... Yeah, but Twisted and Tornado, I mean, I'm not 100% sure about this because I never tried it, but what they say is Twisted is now compatible with the AsyncIO event loop. So you have no more, no trouble now. Uh, yeah, Twisted Tornado, but like uh, G-Event and some other things, they all yeah, G -event, but implementing their own event loop. Yeah, sorry, you cannot uh, have compatibility with PHP too. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're right. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you again very much for your talk.